and it's I mean it's great. Powerful. It's powerful. Harmonies it off the amazing. Yeah, and then that happens, and it, that's what happened and then in the show. Satan does that. Is what happens Satan in your motorbike. Could it be Satan? Hi, I'm Reba Hervis, Artistic Director at Overshadowed Theatrical Productions. Welcome to this week's episode, From the Wings. Welcome to our On the Road Again tour with Rebecca Leland, Ooh. where this we this week we just walked out of the Goodspeed Opera House to see The, the 12. Twelve. Well, there's so much to talk about. First of all, let's just kind of set the stage for you. See what I did there? For the Goodspeed yeah. Opera House. Yeah. It is a little, what do you think? 500 seat yep. theater, maybe? maybe? Yeah. Um, in East Haddam, Connecticut, which is why we came. And we found out that it's really literally kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like It was hard to find dinner yeah. reservations last yeah. night. For being so well known, I guess I thought mm -hmm. it was going to be a bigger area. Like we're from Chicago. We have Chicago Broadway. Right. You think that where the quality is, okay, people are going to be surrounding it, but we're kind no. of middle of nowhere. So it makes it even more surprising that this theater has done what they have because it is a regional theater. They've won two Tony Awards and they've had over 20 of their productions that have gone to Broadway after starting here. So One of which was Annie. Annie! Like That's, big plays. Yes. So that set the stage very well yes. for the play that we came to see, The Twelve. What made you be drawn to this? Because you had heard of Good Speed yes. before. You've heard of their shows. Why did we decide to fly out for this Well, one? because anytime you see a world premiere of, some, of anything that has to do with God or the apostles or faith, I think, well, I'm always looking for things to do at my theater. So... Let's go see it. Let's yeah. see if that has a possibility. And so we got here last night. We did a little touring, and we're so excited, really, actually to see this. Um, I'm, I do think when I watch things that are religious, I do it with a particular kind of lens that um, if, it is, if it has something in it that is inconsistent with Scripture, I don't mean that it is something that you couldn't add and have extra biblical but I mean things that would be contrary yep. to the way it works. Yeah. That I I don't like that, yeah. and I and I get very off-putted by it right away. Yeah. And um, this was no different. Like there was a couple things in it right away that I was just like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And and honestly, I was afraid. I told Rebecca and um, that w on our way here, I was like, I can't promise you that this is not going to be blasphemous, just yeah. because it says that it is about the 12 apostles yeah. after the crucifixion of Jesus yeah. and what they decide to do. I don't know where they're going to take that. I almost thought they were going to. Like I, I kind of, you go into yeah. it because it's definitely not a Christian theater. Like this is not a Christian theater right. company. And I think a lot of times, if you're not following after Christ, you're accidentally blasphemous right. because you are not handling right. the word of right. God, the word of truth, the way it should be handled. They, they had swearing right away in the first scene. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, okay. The, but, you know, I guess I understand that the disciples were very afraid and they were very upset. But obviously that would be something that we would frown upon. 12, Which, can yeah. I talk about the set for just a moment? Talk about the set for one moment. So it's, it, they kind of put the disciples in a modern day upper room, mm -hmm. which was kind of a warehouse. And it was filled with graffiti and broken windows from the light coming in the window. Yeah. And then they had two steel beams that were laying on an angle like a cross Upside and that's down. all you saw when you walked in in the beginning and I thought okay that's powerful and I, I loved it what did you think about that I loved it I mean it gave me very Godspell Jesus Christ Superstar feelings. yeah it's like very okay this is gonna be um I'm not gonna be going away talking about the set as much as I'm gonna talk about the vocals as much as I'm gonna talk about the storyline right. like it's definitely they, they showed you this is where the, the storyline, the plot, the lyrics are what you're going to be wowed by, yeah. less the stage. And I think that's right. okay. Yeah. The stage kind of was the book covers for mm -hmm. the story. So they beautiful. just kind of put it there yeah. and left it there for us and it didn't distract. They did a lot of stuff with like great big like oil cans mm -hmm. and crates. milk crates yeah. and climbed up the cross and, yeah. a and, had, a, and that, had a tarp. Yeah. So yeah. they did things with those to move it around and give it interest without yeah. having to have a set yeah. change. I thought it was very well done. It was 
only 85 minutes long without an intermission and I would say it moved great mm -hmm. as you we were introduced by each one of these disciples and what yep. they did yeah so as I was thinking as I was watching it like I can't wait to find out what Rebecca thought about the music because you. you're much more of a music person than I am mm -hmm. so what do you what did you think about not how well it was written or whatever but just the music not and not even how it was performed mm. just the style of music I would say it's, it was simple in the beginning and I was I thought if this is the way they're gonna carry the whole show I think I'm gonna be bored mm. but as the show went on and we were actually able to meet a couple of the cast mm. um, members as they walked out we stage doored um, so much fun my first time I think ever in my life really uh, but you had to You're fiddler like... on the roof one time I didn't meet Tevya but. <laughs> but like talking to him he was John and he had like a smaller role I would have said and I was like oh I wonder if he's ever gonna sing and then when he sang mm. wow I would say this I don't know if the songs were good and amazing or if the singers were so good so and amazing good. I, I think maybe it was a mixture of both but the songs in general, they kind of underwhelmed me in the beginning and then they overwhelmed me in a very good way. At the end, I only didn't like one song. I think that if I were to say, you know, I go to Wicked, I buy the soundtrack because I love everything about Wicked. There were times that I was like, would I buy the soundtrack to this? Maybe. And then and at, the at, end? The, at the end, I would say, no, I probably would not the buy it. The last song? Well, I would buy that one, but not the soundtrack, right? Not like sure. the whole thing. Sure. If I could Spotify it and buy a certain, you yes. know, a yes. song here and there, I would totally do that. Yes. But not the whole overwhelming. Yes. I would say, yes, yeah, the but last the song. the thing that was so that. incredible about this whole production and the way they performed is, you're right away put into a modern day. What would it be like if Jesus lived today? Yeah. And these 12 men, down to 11, because Judas is no longer with them, it are, are running for their life and afraid because they are sure that the same thing is going to happen to them. Yeah. And like, what, what would the lies that we tell ourselves be? And where would we come out with that? I'm sure they they were afraid, right? The Bible tells us that they were afraid and they went and hid, yeah. right? So it makes a lot of sense to me. And I just loved how real they were. The energy that they performed with was amazing. And yes. they, and they let us, they led us right to the fact of what would it happen? Would, what would I say if I were in the room? Yeah. Like so realistic. And like for us, we believe that this actually happened, right? Mm -hmm. Like I believe that there were 12 apostles that actually followed Jesus, Amen. saw him do all the miracles. And then when he died, it's not like they were perfect people. Like one of this, one of the songs was ordinary and oh. it just gave me chills because oh. it's like, wait, maybe the fact that we are just human and we all have flaws. Maybe Jesus knew that about us. And you're like, wow, like, yeah, like these men had flaws and they were just human. So when Jesus died, it wasn't like, oh yeah, he told us he was rising again. Like, no, they were like, wait a second. Did we, did we follow the wrong way? Right, and right. Like, we were just ordinary people before, but now we are ordinary people that have eyes on us. People are recognizing us. We're denying him. Like, just getting a glimpse of that as a theater goer is so powerful because mm -hmm. I like I can't wait to meet these men in heaven right. and I got to see a little play yes. about them and I kept yes. thinking like what would they think if like they like what would Thomas like the real Thomas think seeing himself being portrayed because he was right. portrayed very differently yes yeah very cynically um jaded yeah. almost mean like yeah. almost like he didn't even fit in until he had his moment of realization at the end where all of a sudden peter i think was yeah. that came and said no wait a minute this is not why you're doubting this is not why you're you're in so much pain oh. right now it was such a powerful moment i loved what you were just saying about ordinary too it's like when when i was watching each one of them kind of have their moment of being ordinary it was such a wow we're all ordinary but god chose them yeah. even judas he chose <sighs> right and that's such a powerful story yeah. and um i i loved it i love the transformation of thomas when he realized why he was doubting so much and that whole interplay between him and peter yeah. it's just it was great like, i it, yeah, loved it the line in the Bible is Thomas says, cause they really played off the, the one time where Thomas was like, let me, let me see his hands. Let me yeah. put my fingers in his hands. Yep. And then throughout the beautiful song, I think it was Peter who said, it's not that you wanted, you, it, the fault is not you wanted to, you know, touch his hands. It's that he put his hands on your heart and your life. Uh, I know, it was so beautiful. It's I'm dead, so I'm gone. I'm, right? I, I started crying. Yeah. I'm like, that is, 
And, like, I, and I did not expect that, even from the beginning, yeah. sitting down, I'm like, okay, what, what, what's this going to come out like? Yep. It was power. And even the moments, I would say there were multiple moments where we thought they were going to rewrite scripture. Yep. Like right off yep. in the bat, yep. what happened? So right away at the beginning, Simon the Zealot comes in and says that he's the one that killed Judas. Mm. And we were like, what? Uh, uh, we didn't have seats together because it was all sold out. So I turned around to Rebecca and I was like, what? And it was right like, off the bat, you're like, okay, great. Like They're going to twist scripture. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. A man's world switching it around and he even had us. a whole song about it yeah how he was like no like we needed to you know take action and then another possible was like no but jesus was love so they really built up this yes. storyline yeah. around this fact yes and then in the end he confesses that that was not really what happened and i was like yes victory we made it right i did have a little bit of trouble with the mary yeah so there was there was men right and then the two women in the show were mary mother of jesus and then mary magdalene who they called mags mags and near the end, at the very end, they said, hey, we want to have you be one of the 12. Because we, we still like, need 12. And they had this beautiful moment where everyone was like, yes, she can be in. Yes, I mean, it was very in. powerful. It was very nice. It's just not scriptural. Correct. So yeah. there, there we go. I think the moment that I, there were two moments that I loved, and I'm kind of hesitating about whether I went to give them because I don't want it to be a spoiler alert. Although by the time any of you see it, it's probably maybe you won't remember it because it's closing here and I think there are very few seats left yeah. between now and the end of October and then they don't know what theater is going to pick it up they're trying to go to Broadway but as the one actor said to us um, greater minds than higher minds than he have the ability to know that so they have not been told what, what will happen to yeah. the show but it would be really great if it could go on um, but in it they have this moment where they're all, they finally get their faith back and they're singing, I will rise. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do what I need to do. We need to have the power that, that Jesus gave with us. And so we're not going to be afraid. So it's this amazing moment. And then one of the other disciples gets up who had, had said he had had a dream after he got hit in the head. And he goes, no, stop. I remember what my dream was. And he goes one by one throughout the room and tells each one of them how they died, how they will die if they walk out that door. And I thought that was such a powerful moment because it's like if you could see the future and know what's going to happen to you if you follow Jesus, would you still turn around and go out the door and go live and follow him? For us in the 21st century, if we got to see how our lives end after following Jesus, like we don't know honestly the future, but it might be and you continued doing ministry and going to church and you discipled people and you evangelized. And you'd be like, okay, cool. Like that, yeah, that's my great, ending. Great. Each and every one of the disciples' endings, Horror. horrific. Stone to death, crucified speared, upside down. crucified upside down. Like, like I was frustrated with the Magdalene part because that's 100% not biblical. Like there was actually another man, like the disciples chose another guy to come on to be the 12th disciple. But when it came to there was no disciple who stood up and said, hey, I had a dream, and this is how you all died. Like, that that did, that did part of history did that, not happen. That is not recorded the in the Bible. The way they each died was recorded in the Bible. Right. So I appreciated the artistic sense that they took there to then, as the audience member, remember how each of them died. Right. And well, some people might not even know that. If people haven't studied the yeah. scripture. The woman next to me was like, oh, gasping at some of them. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. So I, did, I, I, I wasn't mad that they changed that part. Because even though it was artistic... It was still historical. Yes. So it's still truth. Whereas right. Just the way, Mary yeah. followed, right. but she was not the one that got right. appointed right. for that. Right. So the other moment that I thought was just beautiful was when Mary had taken the tarp that was in the room and they opened the door and she had it in her arms like it was the shroud of Jesus. And then she brought it in and they opened it. And then they all stood behind it like they were at Da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's so beautiful. So I loved the moments with the symbolism yeah. that yeah. they thought enough to bring in for us. It was yeah. really gorgeous. Yeah. Just what a great play. Uh, was there anything negative about it that you mm. feel like? I didn't like the Mary song. I didn't yeah. like the song that Mary, Mother of Jesus, sang. Um, for me, I didn't like the theology of it. Like, that's the one that I, the yeah. only one I didn't clap for. Um, I didn't yep. like that she was like, where is he? Babe saw her son literally die. Yeah. It's very clear in scripture that yeah. she knew where he was. Right. And it didn't even come across as a grieving, for me, a grieving mother, like, kind of confusion. Where is, she, where is he? It kind of came across as she was actually looking for him, which I thought I was kind of confused about. Um, and I didn't like 
she was like, um, he wasn't strong enough. And she said this in like the lyric. She was like, he, yeah. he, he wasn't like strong enough. And I want to protect him. But right. it wasn't in a, she knew he was the son of God way. It just felt, for yep. me, it felt like they were using the idea of Mary to write a really quick song that maybe Mary would sing. For me, yep. and it just felt like a ballad that they knew they needed to throw a very strong woman in. So for me, I didn't like it. I didn't. I felt yeah. like they were just they were throwing away a really cool opportunity to have a really cool ballad song. And I would say that, that you know that my my nerves kind of get up a little bit when people rewrite things to make women be heroes or the strong part of the story. And I felt like it hinted at that with Mags, with the character of Mags. And so I was like ready for it to, to go, go off far. the rails. Yeah. Um, I don't think it went too far, but it did go far enough that it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I love the story of Mary Magdalene. So I, it's not that I feel opposed to the story. I feel like the fact that God just uses strong women in the Bible over and over and over again and shows that it's like, look, God picked the woman yeah. to do a job. So I love that it's represented. Yeah just bothers me a little bit if people go a little bit too far of something that is could not historically have happened and the so. fact they they messed up jesus resurrection too she was like i was she was singing about it she was like i was on my way there and then the earthquake and then i felt that i saw the stones and like and you're like no you didn't and there were also yeah. like angels there but it's okay so it's, it, it was definitely yeah. this was not done by a christian yeah. theater organization yeah it was very clear that it was not it was clear that they knew enough about scripture and they studied it but for some reason, they did take yeah. creative liberties when it came to it. So I would I would not say this is a play yeah. that um, has biblical merit, but I would say it has a powerful, powerful ability yes. to bring truth to light, yep. even if there are some moments where totally it's not agree. Truthful. Uh, well, we wish we could take you all with us and hopefully in just a small way we have. Thank you so much for watching. If you continue to like this kind of content, we really would appreciate it if you would follow us, like it, share the videos. Until next time, this is just me. And me. Talking to you. From the wings. From Goodspeed Opera House in Connecticut.